I'm going to speak on the topic of escaping the theology of Babylon. Babylon has its own religion. It has its own theology. The Babylonian theology is self-indulgent. It is in God's sight lawless. It has a people who are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It has a form of godliness about it, but there is no actuality of the life of Jesus Christ within it. Those who profess it are an abomination, really, to the very image that God wants to portray as his son through a bride of surrendered believers on the earth. God wants you to drive a nice car and have a nice uh, wardrobe. He wants you to, to live in a nice home and have good promotions. He wants you to have a great social life. He wants you to have all the best that the world has to offer. God wants you to have good things. Now, throughout scriptural history, Babylon is symbolic it's not just a physical place but it's also a spiritual condition it's the condition of fallen men and fallen societies who claim to know and to speak for God it's best typified by Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3 Paul typifies this Babylonian society as self-indulgent a lawless time lovers of pleasure people who gravitate to and profess a form of godliness that clearly has no demonstration of the life of Christ in it. Now the scripture has warned about this. We're clearly warned right from the time of the earliest beginnings, right through to the end of the book of Revelation, that the devil is going to come. He's going to come with a mighty flood. He's going to try to duplicate as it is the gospel of Jesus Christ and to so mar the way to eternal life and to so mar the way to salvation and the abundance that God has for a people who believe in Jesus Christ that there'll be a confusion that Jesus himself said were it not were it were possible even the very elect could be deceived there'll be such a deception especially in the last days of time third John 2 says beloved I would above all else that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers I wish it said it just a little bit more clearly in our language today. It would go something like this. My dearly beloved children, I want you to have every earthly blessing that you can possibly imagine, but only to the degree that you have spiritual maturity and Christ-like character. And you know what? If people would see that, then maybe they'd get the message, I need to grow up. <laughs> I need to get with the program here and grow up. They are merchants, and Babylon has a theology that allows them to uh, satiate as it is their lust, all in the name of God, and in supposedly what should be or is called God's house. And in verse 4, he says, John says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Come out from this false Christ. Come out from this false Christianity that does not even minimally represent Jesus Christ, especially in this last hour of time. God wants you to drive a nice car. And Come out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. You know dying to self is not a requirement to go to heaven? Do you know that you can be selfish all your life go to heaven? Babylonian theology is self-indulgent. It is in God's sight lawless. More than we know how to want to be blessed, God wants to bless us. Why would he want to see all the sinners have all the good stuff? Job was a suffering man. He lost health, he lost family, he lost property. He was sitting down in an ash heap. And came to him three supposed friends with this satanically inspired theology. And they told this suffering poor man, they said, if God was with you, you would be prosperous and wealthy. If God was with you, you would be healthy. If God was with you, you'd have no trouble. You'd be happy all the time. The theology right out of hell itself come to condemn a suffering man. It would go something like this. My dearly beloved children, I want you to have every earthly blessing that you can possibly imagine, but only to the degree that you have spiritual maturity and Christ-like character. And they told this suffering poor man, they said, if God was with you, you would be prosperous and wealthy. I wish it said it just a little bit more clearly in our language today. Babylon has its own religion. It has its own theology. 
We don't have to talk God into blessing us. We don't have to pray five hours a day for God to bless us. He wants to. More than we know how to want to be blessed, God wants to bless us. Why would He want to see all the sinners have all the good stuff? Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. The poor are going to realize that Babylonian theology has seen them as created other than in the image of God. Has not seen the poor as precious in the sight of God. Has not seen anything that doesn't further their own objective is worth pursuing. The poor are going to understand that the theology of Babylon does not represent the heart of God and today stands at the right hand of the poor. The scripture says that God stands at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. The poor are going to realize that the theology of Babylon has condemned them to excuse the lack of godliness in their own conscience. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, a spiritual awakening is also coming among God's people about what Calvary is all about. Calvary is not about self-indulgence. How disgraceful to even think of using the cross of Jesus Christ for personal gain. Disgraceful. There's no other word for it. Abominable. And it will be judged. Some now and some later, but folks, it's going to be judged. Calvary is about giving ourselves to that which is the work of God. And Jesus Christ, undeniably. If you really study how Paul prayed for the church, it can very quickly make you ashamed of your own prayer life at least that's the effect it had on me because Paul never really prayed any natural thing for the church he prayed for them to be mature and to, to have an even temper no matter what went on in their life and to know the love of God the height the depth the length the breadth to have wisdom and revelation and to learn to choose and prize what was excellent what Paul prayed for the church was things that would affect their character not things that would affect their pocketbook because you see, when your character is affected, your pocketbook will automatically be affected. Some of you didn't understand that. The poor are going to understand that the theology of Babylon does not represent the heart of God. Because you see, when your character is affected, your pocketbook will automatically be affected. This is satanically inspired theology. The theology right out of hell itself. Some of you didn't understand that. Now you'd ask me today, how do I escape the theology of Babylon? It's, it's really easy. Go, go to Psalm 41. Now, I know this is not a very clap your hand kind of a message, but folks, I, I'm hearing something. Psalm 41. Quite frankly, I don't care if half the church walks out. I'm going to preach the truth, Pastor Dave's going to preach the truth, Pastor Neil's going to preach the truth. Psalm 41, verse 1 says, Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not deliver him to the will of his enemy. Now the will of your enemy is to deceive you. And God says, you stop and consider the poor. Just stop and consider. Stop and consider the poor, the disadvantaged, the disaffected of society. God wants you to drive a nice car and have a nice uh, wardrobe. He wants you to, to live in a nice home and have good promotions. He wants you to have a great social life. He wants you to have all the best that the world has to offer. God wants you to have good things. If you, I, I'll make you a promise. If, if you will step out, and begin to help the poor, if you'll do that, you'll not be deceived by any snake oil salesman on television. Water drillers. Have you seen the water drillers? I was in a gym, I couldn't believe it. There's a guy that says, I led of the spirit to drill a well 210 feet down and struck holy water. And all you gotta do is send in like a hundred dollars and you get a little vial of this holy water. Drink it. This is supposed to be in the name of Jesus. It's the old western wagon rolling up with you know, Uncle Sam snake oil, healing at elixir, healing all kinds of illness. It's the same thing. There's nothing. It's just all in the name of Christ now. 
the same scam. Well, we have some products available that I believe are going to really be a blessing to you. We've got what we call a mind package that has over 23 hours of teaching and counseling in it. I believe literally it can be life changing. So many people go today and they get professional counseling and they pay big money for it. It's the old Western wagon rolling up with you know Uncle Sam snake oil. Well, we have 23 hours of help in this package that I believe literally can be life changing. You'll receive our study guide as a bonus when you order this package. And so let us tell you more about it. I believe you're going to want to have it. The same scam. The same scam. The same scam. And yet the poor, the widows, people at home, shut-ins, fall for this. But folks, I want to tell you something. If, if, if you and I will just start reaching out and giving to the poor, however God leads us, it, it can be a hand, it can be a word, it can be a shoulder to lean on. It doesn't always have to be money. Now, wonderful if it can be, but it can't. sometimes it can't be. Peter and John, in spite of what prosperity preachers preach today, had no money. And you will lay hold of the heart of God. I see Peter and John coming into the temple, and they've got this lame man between them who's leaping and dancing and praising God. They haven't got a dime in their pockets. But they've just reached out, and they've, they've helped and modern religion of its time is, is so threatened by this. So hates the simplicity of Jesus pouring his life through people to people who are oppressed and left marginalized at the temple door. How many years did that man sit there and was not allowed in? I mean, and I don't mean this to be rude, but sometimes we have people show up either at work or in meetings. And I'm thinking, did you just not look at yourself today or... What's the problem here? <laughs> you know, like somebody will come and their clothes look like they've been in the dryer all night. You know, you know how when you heat them up, you leave them in the dryer, and then they come out with these permanent wrinkles all over, and it's like, I mean, we've had to send people home from work to iron their clothes. I mean, I shouldn't have somebody working in a ministry and have to tell them to go home and iron their clothes. I want to be kind to the poor, especially of this city. And the Lord will show me how to do that. He'll show me as a, as a Christian, not as a pastor, as a Christian. And then he'll show us as a church how to be kind. It's the cry of my heart. And it's the way to escape the theology of Babylon. It's, it's the way to, if you get stuck in front of one of these television programs, then you begin to realize how fraudulent these men and women really are. The whole gospel is about themselves. You begin to realize that they're bringing nothing but dead things from under the water. And they're condemning the suffering man. James said to the Christian church, you've despised the poor. And of course, this is always in the hearts of people everywhere. And he challenged the people. He said, cleanse your hands and purify your hearts.